all of the, all of the expectations uh, that I set for myself to give my family the perfect Christmas, to find the perfect gift for someone. Uh, I often spend more time planning than I do enjoying the season. And uh, I know I need to relax because we're all called to those periods of rest. But if I'm being honest, uh, it's not just the Christmas season that has me feeling tired and anxious. This year, as an essential worker, my office has been open every day. Uh, when most people were on lockdown, I was in the office creating shift schedules for employees. Um, I am humbled to be called a leader at work and I respect the responsibilities that come with my position, my position of authority. I believe that my ministry extends to my team at work. So if I think that I'm walking in the will of God, I've been asking myself, why am I so exhausted? And I, uh, I, I went to explore uh, Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 through 30 in, in my personal prayer time. And I want to share some of those reflections with you this morning. So Matthew reads, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So as I meditated on these verses, uh, I, I reflected on the yoke as a symbol of submission and servitude. And doing a little research on yokes, I identified that there, there are single yokes and double yokes. Uh, a lot of the images online talk about double yokes, um, but, but single yokes were actually common as well. There was an article that compared the fit of the yoke to children's shoes. And the article reads, yokes, are, yokes for oxen are like shoes for children. One size does not fit all. A young teen may need as many as five or six yokes before it reaches maturity. A well-fitted yoke will allow an ox team to pull to its full potential. A poorly fitted yoke will cause discomfort. Sorry, I lost myself. Could injure the oxen and will not allow the team to pull to its full potential. So as I unpack these verses for myself, what I'm seeing here is that God wants me to submit to his authority, and there are benefits to being submitted to his authority. God's yoke is easy, which suggests that it's fitted to my exact dimensions, not to cause discomfort or injury. God wants me to learn of him. He's going to train me to wear this yoke and prepare me for the burden that I will carry. And I shall find rest unto my soul when I am submitted. So now I find myself asking, if I don't feel rested, is that evidence that I'm not submitted or is it just a product of hard work? So I've been looking further at how I spend my time in prayer, at work, family time, self-care, exercise, ministry, personal development, entertainment, and hobbies. I'm asking myself questions such as, am I overcommitted in an area that's causing me imbalance? Do I not spend enough time in areas that would be restorative? What am I saying yes to in my life? And what am I being called to say yes to that I'm not? So I love the word. I love that God has preserved the word for us so that we have somewhere to turn when we have these questions so that we have a resource that we can reach out to. Speaking to him is great, but sometimes when you're struggling to hear that voice, it is so great to open the word. And I don't know if anybody else has done this where, where they've just been asking questions and they open up and they find a verse, but, but I opened up one day in prayer and I found Micah chapter six. And in, in Micah chapter six, um, he's talking to the Israelites and, um, the, the condition of their hearts, right? They're, they're being brought out of bondage and slavery, but they're still not wanting to, to walk in, in God's will. 
So Micah chapter six, verses six through eight reads, wherewith shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before the high God? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings with calves of a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams or with 10,000s of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? And now here's the part that struck me. He hath showed thee, O man, what is good. And what doth the Lord require of thee, but to do justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with thy God? Do justly, love mercy, submit to God and walk with him in his perfect will. So that humility part, <laughs> uh, it, it made me think of it, the story of how, how I came to DC um, because I thought, I thought that I was humble, um, but, but when you seek God, he, he reveals things to you about yourself. And uh, the, I'm not sure how many people know the story of how Dave and I moved to DC, but it was um, almost a year that we had been married. My brother was getting married in Detroit and I woke up in that hotel room that morning and said, I think we should move to Washington, DC. Because I had had a dream the night before where God spoke to me and said, you're being called to Washington, DC. And so I didn't tell Dave at the time because I thought he would think I was crazy that, that I had this word from God and that I was confident that it was from him. But we started a conversation about graduate school and about his goals and dreams. And, and he shared with me him wanting to, to go back and get a graduate degree. Um, and, and he wanted to be a public servant. And uh, so th that, that conversation all started from that dream. And uh, it, all, it all seemed very submissive, right? Like, yes, I get this calling and I'm willing to put away my career and, and my personal agenda to, to be able to support my husband. But there, there was a lot going on in my heart at that time, um, a lot of bitterness. Offense was deeply rooted in me. And I was often offended in my work life, in my home life, even in my family life. Um, I was relatively young in my apostolic faith, baptized not four years prior. And based on the edification of another member of my church family, I purchased the book, The Bait of Satan by John Bevere. And that book changed my life. Uh, but I didn't read it when I bought it. <laughs> It was several years later that I read it. I packed it up in a box and we moved to DC and, and had it with me all that time. Um, but it, it wasn't until someone brought it up several years later that I actually opened the book and read it. I was trying to pursue my goals at work um, and, and I thought that, that I had the power to achieve success at work, right? I, I was capable and I was strong and I was competent and, and it was, these other supervisors who were in my way, they didn't, they didn't respect my talent. They didn't um, put me in positions to grow. And it was always somebody else's fault that I wasn't getting promoted. And um, so that was one of the major offenses that I was dealing with was, was submitting to authority at work. And I, I had left a job, um, my, my last job before moving to uh, DC, I'd been in that I'd left somewhere and I'd been in this new position for about two years. I left in search of a, a, a pay raise in greener pastures and I achieved the pay raise, but I found that I was in a comically chaotic environment. Um, yeah, I've got some stories from that one, but there, there were a lot of good people around me, but the, the culture was toxic. And so at that time where God spoke to me and, and, and gave me that word to move to DC, um, I, I jumped on it. I, I didn't think twice about it because I thought that this was my way forward, that, that okay, he's, he's calling me here because I'm, I'm going to get the promotion and I'm going to get this other life if I submit in this other area. And it came, but not, not on my timeline, put it that way. Um, I always tell people that God wastes time. And even though I was being unsubmissive at the time. He used my stubbornness 
to think that I could build a career without needing to rely on him. And he used it as leverage to put me in a place where he wanted me to grow. Had I read the book, The Bait of Satan, when I first bought it, I would not have repeated the lesson of the unreasonable boss again in my new job in Maryland and in the job after that. So uh, I'd like to uh, reference Romans chapter 13, verses 1 and 2 for you. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power, resisteth the ordinance of God, and they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. The truth is that I just didn't want to submit. Uh, what I know now is that I had to put away my pride before I could be used by God. I, I already thought that I was enough smart enough, strong enough, but, but he showed me that if I couldn't submit that he could that that was a tough pill to swallow because I really I had that desire I had that heart for him and and I thought that I I could be good enough um, but but he showed me that he's not looking for good enough he's looking for submission he's looking for someone who's going to do his will for his purpose and his intent not for my glory not for for my esteem um, so it was at this point in my life that I finally picked up the book and remembering that I owned it. And uh, as soon as I finished reading it, I, I started over again because the first time that I read it, I read it for understanding. But then the second time I read it, I read it for application. If I, if, if I, knowing it isn't enough, you have to apply it to your life. And so that was the point that I was at where I, I had to go back and say, okay, this is good. Now I have to figure out how to actually apply it. Um, so that it sticks. And it took some time and some prayer, but but I found that way to humble myself so that I could walk with God, so that I could be used by him, and so that I wasn't following my personal agenda. And I, I shared with my home group uh, some of my testimony about my current job. Um, I When I was finally felt called, released from the, the job that I spent five years in where I was learning submission to authority, uh, I, I was having trouble getting interviews. And um, then I got this call from a company who was inviting me to apply for a job. And, and I did, and it, it was a decent fit. Um, but it, I spent eight months in that role, learning things that prepared me for the next job that I was called to. Again, I received a phone call, invited to apply for this other job, the role that I'm in today, um, a, a great position to come build a team, to, to be one of the senior leaders in this program. And had I not gone through that other eight months experience, I wouldn't have had the foundation. And so I, I really felt like God was opening the doors for me at that point. I could never have uh, structured that path the way that he put it before me. I knew it was God's hand in that. And so I felt such confidence, even on the tough days, that because I had that confidence that it was God who put me in that place, that I could endure anything, that, that he was going to give me the resources. And that if I continued to lean on him, that he would give me the strength to handle whatever presented in that situation and that confidence that I felt in that journey in that time of, of challenge and working 12 hour days to, to, to get the, that, uh, that team established, um, that that's what carried me through. And so now I'm, I'm in this place where I'm, I'm having that lack of confidence, right? I've, I've tasted what it's like to, to walk with him on that journey. And now I'm, I'm feeling like I'm going through another maybe a valley and, and wanting to have that, that hilltop experience again. Um, so that's what's bringing me in this season um, to, to some other prayer and meditation. And um, wanted to wrap up again with, with some thoughts that submission is not a one and done event and it's like a muscle that needs to be exercised. So 
I, I really feel in the season that I'm being called again to examine again. Just because I submitted once doesn't mean that I'm always that I'll never stray from the path. So I'm being called again to say, okay, Lord, show me, reveal to me uh, those things that might be in my path that are causing me to stumble. I once heard a preacher say, nobody gets the gift of submission. And I just love that because it, it it's not like the fruits of the spirit or or the uh, the anointings where maybe you have some stronger than other. We're all called. And, and it's not easier for one person than another. Um, so we're all in this journey together. And that gives me some comfort too, that maybe you understand today what I'm, what I'm going through and what I'm speaking of. Uh, so again, I, I want to read Matthew chapter 11, 28. Amen. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart. And ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. I continue to examine when I am responding yes. Sometimes it's work related. Sometimes it's a home obligation. Sometimes it's making room for a yes when I take time for self care or a hobby. I said yes to daily dedicated prayer time and I track it on my calendar. I said yes to taking some days off over this weekend to spend time with family. I clicked yes to some online shopping for Christmas gifts and some things for myself too. You're getting the honest me this morning. Uh, so if you're like me and you're finding yourself restless, anxious, or overwhelmed, what will be your next yes? What do you need more of or less of in your routine? Do you guard what comes into your mind by what you read, what you watch, and with whom you keep company? Is God calling you to take better care of yourself? Or is he calling you to look past your immediate situation to bless someone else? Are you hearing the voice of God or the voice of temptation? I pray that your next yes and mine brings us to a place where our souls find rest. Amen. Great teaching. Good job, Sister Colleen. And our second lesson today is being taught by Vladimir and Rebecca. We welcome them to our Zoom lesson today. God bless you. I'm sure you would rather be in Uzbekistan or Kyrgyzstan, but you're here with us and we're thankful. God bless you. I'm going to mute and you have the podium. Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. Thank you, Pastor. Hello, Pastor. Hello, brothers and sisters. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't need translation. Uh, can you hear us OK? OK. I'm very glad today that we can share with you the Спасибо. word. Thank you, the Pastor. Thank you that we can share what God given, has given us. Today, the title of today's message is Breath of Life. Genesis. Uh, Genesis chapter 7, verse 22. It says... Genesis 22. Chapter 2. Okay, okay. Oh. Chapter 2. Uh, Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Uh, Psalm, mm -hmm. Psalms chapter 150, verse 6. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. There is one thing that before I never thought about or noticed, and I didn't really appreciate it. Но просто потому что это всегда у меня было. Because it was always just part of my life. Это мое дыхание. It's my breath. И мы можем дышать потом и поэтому мы живы. We can breathe, that's why we're alive. А мёртвый человек, он почти ничем не отличается от живого. Um, a dead person basically doesn't have that much different from a living person. Да, он не может дышать просто. Just he doesn't have breath in him. Да, и здесь написано, что Бог 
Он вдохнул в Адама свой дух. And here it says that God put his spirit, breathed life into Adam. И Адам стал дышать и жить. And Adam started to breathe and live. И сейчас, когда нам нужно носить маски, and right now, everywhere we go, we wear masks. Да, мы просто остро ощущаем, что нам не хватает просто нормального дыхания. And we always can feel how hard it is that we can't have enough breath. We can't breathe normally. И мы болели COVID-19. Um, we, we were sick with COVID-19. В один момент просто все заболели. And it was just one, one moment, we were just all sick. Но мы победили COVID. But we beat COVID. Но по-настоящему это не мы победили. But it wasn't really us that beat COVID. Это великая благодать. It's a, это великая милость Господа. The great grace and mercy of God. Иисус победил COVID. That Jesus beat coronavirus. Мы ничего не делали. We didn't do anything. Мы ничего не могли сделать. We couldn't even do anything. Если Иисус не, не исцелит, тогда мы просто умрем. If God hadn't healed us, then we just would have died. Это Иисус победил COVID. It's Jesus conquered COVID. И вы знаете, COVID-19 это ужасная, and это страшная болезнь. You know, it's COVID-19, it's a horrible, terrible, really horrible disease. Я лежал и спал около недели. I was laying and just sleeping for almost a whole week. Потому что я больше ничего не мог делать. There was nothing else I could even do. Я никогда не представлял себе, что мог, можно так сильно болеть. I never even thought that it was possible to be that sick. Все мое тело, All my, my whole body, мои кости, my bones, они все болели. Everything was sick. Everything was pain. Вирус забрал все мои силы. The whole virus just took away all my strength. Всякая еда казалась не просто безвкусной, но она была горькой. The, every food I tasted, it wasn't that I just couldn't taste it. It also tasted bitter. У меня была зноб и диарея. And I had uh, chills and diarrhea. И папа Ребекки, он тоже болел. And Rebecca's father was also sick. И он сказал такие слова. And he said these words while he was sick. Когда я умру, When I die, кремируйте мое тело. Cremate my body. Потому что я хочу точно знать, что оно не чувствует боли, because что оно не болеет. I want to know for sure that my body настолько все болело. And that's how bad it was when we were all sick. И на четвертый день у меня поднялась температура больше 39 градусов. When I was on my fourth day of being sick, uh, my temperature went up to over 102 degrees. И по потом меня отвезли в больницу. And they, we went to the hospital. И мы сделали этот рентген, и оказалось, что у меня еще есть пневмония. And so I went to the ER, and they did an X-ray, and they told me I had pneumonia. Поэтому мне так трудно было дышать. And that's why it was so hard for me to breathe. Да, и написано, что Бог создал человека из праха земного. And in the Bible we just read, it says the Lord created man from the dust of the earth and breathed into his face the breath of life. О, Господь, я всего лишь прах земной. Oh Lord, I am, I am just dust. Я всего лишь глина. I'm just clay. Я всего лишь грязь. Just dirt. Потому что без дыхания я просто умру. умру. Because without breath, I just die. Просто ты взял, захотел и взял и вдохнул дыхание жизни. Because you took me Мой and нос. you breathed life into my nose. И я стал жить. I started to, to live. Ты жизнь. You are life. Ты источник жизни. You are the ты source дух of life. жизни. Дух жизни. Oh, дух. You're the spirit of life. <laughs> я, я так сильно нуждаюсь в тебе. I need that. That's how strong and much I need. Я нуждаюсь тебе каждую секунду. I need you every second. Каждый момент моей жизни. Every moment of my life. Как я нуждаюсь в воздухе, которым я дышу. The same way that I need um, air is the same way that I need God. Need your spirit. Мы дышим, и мы даже не замечаем, как мы это делаем. And we constantly breathe, and we don't even think about how it. Куда бы мы ни пошли, там везде есть воздух. Everywhere we go, there's just always air everywhere. Просто мы дышим и автоматически. We just Breathe and it's just automatic. Но представьте, что в вашем доме, представьте, что в вашем доме. Imagine that in your house. Только в одной комнате не будет воздуха. Just one one room in your house, there would be no air in that room. Сможете ли вы жить в этом доме? Would you be able to live in that house? ли вы жить там? Would you want to live in that house? Если Бог выключит воздух только на один час. Even if God just turned off the air for one hour. 
Тогда мы все умрем. Then everybody would die. И Дух Святой. And the Holy Spirit. Он нужен нам больше, чем воздух. We need him more. We need the Holy Spirit more than we need air. Если бы мы не хотели и не могли бы жить в доме, в котором только в одной комнате нет воздуха. Если бы и так как мы не хотим жить в ком в доме, где. The same way we wouldn't want to live in a house that doesn't have air in just one room. One room. In only one, one room. room. Only one room. Yeah. То почему тогда в нашей жизни есть Такие области, где мы не можем доверять Богу. Then why is it that we don't... Люди. Ну, не мы, люди. Why is it that people don't want to trust God with all of their lives? Оставляют части, где они не хотят, чтобы Бог там действовал. People leave this one part where they just don't want to obey God. Если мы не можем жить без воздуха только один час. If it's not possible for us to live without air for just one hour of our life. Почему люди часто хотят Бога только в какое-то определенное время? Then why do they only want God at certain times of their life? Мы нуждаемся в воздухе каждую секунду. We need the most of воздух. Uh -huh. We need air every second. Нам нужно каждый каждый момент дышать. We need to breathe every moment. Не периодически. Not periodically. Не только в понедельник not или just, вторник. Not just on Monday or just on Tuesday. Да. И поэтому нам Бог нужен постоянно. That's why we need God секунду. constantly. Нам нужен Дух Святой каждый момент. Every second. We have to have the Holy Spirit in our life every moment. Аминь. Amen. И в этот раз. And in this time. Да. Я действительно почувствовал себя. When I was sick, I really felt like I was at the dust of the earth. I was just like a piece of dirt laying on the ground. I was just like a piece of dirt laying on the ground. I was just like a piece of dirt laying on the ground. Because I just lay like the ground. I just like a piece of dirt laying on the ground. I just like a piece of dirt laying on the ground. I just like a piece of dirt laying on the ground. I just like a piece of dirt laying on the ground. I just like a piece of dirt laying on the ground. I just like a piece of dirt laying on the ground. I just like a piece of dirt laying on the ground. I just like a piece of dirt laying on the ground. I just like a piece of dirt laying on the ground. I just like a piece of dirt laying on the ground. I just like a piece of dirt laying on the ground. I just like a piece of dirt laying on the ground. I just like a piece of dirt laying The people sinned. И пренебрегали Божьим духом. And neglected the spirit of God. И тогда пришел суд. And that's when God's judgment came. Бытие семь двадцать два. Genesis chapter seven verse twenty two. And in whose nostrils was the breath of life of all that was in the dry land died. И написано, что последние дни тоже будет так. And Matthew chapter twenty four. Verses thirty-seven to thirty-nine. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Написано, что здесь написано, что последний день будет так же, как. It says here that in the in the last days it will be the same as in the days of Noah. Да, этот день придет неожиданно. And that day is going to come unexpectedly. Да. Ной, интересно, что Ной строил этот ковчег много-много лет. It's interesting that Noah was building that ark so many years. И перед тем, как наступил сам потоп. And even right before the flood came. За семь дней Бог сказал ему: через семь дней я будет потоп. And for seven days, God said to Noah, "In seven days there will be the flood." Это значит, Ной все семь семь дней он поспешно собирал все, что осталось снаружи. It means that for seven days, all his Noah's family was gathering together everything that was outside that ark. И люди даже видя это, никто не пришел туда. And even people still didn't come. Для этих людей этот потоп пришел неожиданно. And for those people who that were outside the ark, that flood came unexpectedly. Но не для Ноя, который знал, слышал Божий, Божий голос и but, знал Божью волю. But for Noah who knew God's voice and was following after God's will. И когда я лежал и болел, когда я лежал и болел, when I was sick, laying, and laying, laying and sick, я понял, что если сейчас я умру, I understood that if I die right now, то если бы я не был рожден свыше, if I hadn't been born again, то все было бы уже поздно. Then everything would be already too late. Просто болезнь пришла неожиданно. Already the the just the sickness came unexpectedly. Если до этого я не рожден свыше. If I hadn't been born again already. Если до этого я не знаю Бога. If before that I had known God. То это все уже будет поздно. Then it would be way too late already. Но как так как я умер со Христом. 
But just the same as I died in Christ already. То смерть не страшна мне. Then death isn't afraid. I'm not afraid of death. И в такой момент ты осознаешь по-настоящему, что является важным. And in that moment when God would call you, what's the, everything starts to be not important. Колоссянам третья глава третий стих. Colossians chapter three verse three. For you're dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. Да. Четверг мы ходили на кладбище. <coughs> this past this past Thursday we went to the cemetery. Это был день благодарения. It was Thanksgiving. Я спросил у тех, кто там лежит. And I asked the people that were laying there. У этих мертвых людей. The, the dead people. У вас есть проблемы? Do you have some kind of problems? Может, у вас есть какая-то депрессия? Maybe you have depression. Или же uh, у вас есть какой-то план на следующий месяц? What's your plan for next month? Вы хотите есть или пить? Maybe something you want to eat or drink. О чем ты переживаешь? What about, what are your worries? Но они просто молчали. Well, all those dead people just were quiet. Они просто ничего не говорят. They just lived like this and didn't do anything. Вы знаете, что нужно мертвому человеку? Do you know what a dead person needs? Ничего не надо. They don't need anything. И когда я лежал и болел, when I was sick and lying there, да, знаете, я еще был жив, конечно. Of course, I was still alive. И что мне нужно было в тот момент? But what did I need at that moment? Это просто немного воздуха. It's just a little bit of air, a little bit of air in my lungs. Сделать еще один короткий вдох. I needed just another little bit. Возможность дышать и не задыхаться. I just wanted to be able to breathe and not choke. Вы знаете, умереть совсем не страшно. And you know, to actually to die, it's not really that terrible. Страшно видеть, как умирают люди без Бога. What's terrible is to see people who die when they don't have Christ. В Кыргызстане несколько человек умерло на пороге больницы. In Kyrgyzstan, several people died on the doorstep of the uh, hospital. Потому что в больнице не было места. Because in the hospital there was no place for them. Не было кислорода. There wasn't any oxygen. И они просто задохнулись. They just couldn't breathe. They needed oxygen. не получили это так. And they кислород. suffocated on the doorstep of the hospital. 17 октября. On October 17th. А uh, дедушка Ребекки. Rebecca's grandfather. Его зва- зовут Ричард Чарльз Клайн Сеньор. His name was Richard Charles Klein Senior. Он пошел на небеса. He went to heaven. Он был пастором. He was a pastor. Мужем веры. A man of faith. Возрожденным от Духа. Born again of the Spirit. Он был наполнен любовью. He was very full of love. И он был молитвенным воином. And he was a prayer warrior. И как апостол Павел говорит uh, послание Тимофею. And like the apostle Paul wrote in the second epistle to Timothy. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all of them also that love his appearing. 2 Timothy 4, 7 and 8. And, October, and on the 22nd of October, uh, at the funeral, there were, um, the military came. Because he was a veteran. Он служил в Японии на острове Окинава. He uh, served in the island of Okinawa in Japan. И один военный взял трубу. And one uh, the military they grabbed the trumpet. И он стал играть. На and he started to play the taps. После этого. After that. Они сложили флаг. They folded the flag. И потом вручили этот and флаг And they gave that flag to Rebecca's grandmother Nanny. Это был такой особенный и незабываемый момент. It was a very special moment that you could never forget. Который тронул сердца каждого человека. Touched everybody into the depths of their heart that moment. И это великая честь. It's a very great honor. Служить своей стране. To serve your country. И еще большая честь. But there's even a greater honor. Служить небесному царству. To serve in the kingdom of God. И Павел здесь говорит, что он взял на себя ответственность. И мужественно сражался. Paul took responsibility and fought bravely in a spiritual war. Духовной войне. Все, что Бог сказал ему сделать, whatever God told Paul to do, он сделал. He did. Все, что туда, куда Бог сказал ему идти, он пошел. Wherever he told him to go, he went. И Павел остался верным Богу. And Paul remained and kept the faith. И он сохранил свою веру. Remained faithful, and God prepared the reward. 
the crown of righteousness. И поэтому Бог приготовил для него корону праведности. And God had prepared for him the reward, the crown of righteousness. И в тот момент, когда Бог призовет нас, in the moment when God calls, Он вручит для нас эту корону. He is preparing for us that kind of crown. И велик и мужей Божьих ждет великая почесть. Такого нет там. Что еще? Мужей Божьих видит великая почесть. Людей веры ждет великая почесть. Uh, and the people of faith are re- re- waiting to receive the great prize. Honor. 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 Okay. <laughs> when God calls us to leave, nothing, many things start to become not important. Работа, business. Your work, your business. What's your plan for the weekend? Whatever money you have in the bank. Насколько ты образованный? И так далее. Самое важное будет тот момент. Рожден ли ты свыше? Рожден ли ты от воды и духа? Принял ли ты Духа Святого? Это великая милость и благодать. Великая. Великая благодать и милость. Бог дал нам Духа Святого, чтобы мы могли жить заново, чтобы мы могли жить вечно. И на стене в кабинете у, у дедушки Ребекки um, the wall, там написано, там написано, да. благодать Это то, что Бог дал на мне, то, что я не заслужил. God, grace is when God gives me what I don't deserve. А милость это то, что Бог дал мне, то, что я заслуж... не заслужил. And mercy is when God does not give me what I do deserve. И пас... апостол Павел пишет своему духовному сыну Тимофею. And apostle Paul wrote to his spiritual son Timothy. Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Second Timothy 4, verse 2. Он говорит, проповедуй, учи. He said, preach, teach. Обличай. Reprove. Запрещай. Rebuke. Настой вовремя или не вовремя. Be instant in season or out of season. В любое время. In any time. Постоянно, всегда. Always, constant. Да, и прежде всего мы должны делать это в своей семье. And, and most important of everything, we need to do it in your family. Из-за пандемии. Because of the pandemic. Все стало намного сложнее. Everything started to become a little bit harder. Сложно путешествовать. It's harder to go on vacation or travel. Невозможно делать большие собрания. You can't make a big meeting. Но Бог не изменился. But God didn't change. Его слово не изменилось. His word has never changed. Его обетования, они не изменились. Обетования. Um, his, pro- oh, his promises never changed. Он продолжает спасать. He still goes on and st- Он still продолжает saves. исцелять и воскрешать. He's still healing people. Просто, может быть, нам нужно uh, изменить наш фокус. Maybe we just need to change our focus a little bit. Теперь у нас есть больше времени, чтобы уделять своей семье. Right now we have more opportunity to vote to our family. Служить своим домашним. Our time with our family. Давать больше любви своим детям. To serve our families, give love to our children. Мы видим, как дьявол он с первых дней своей работы на земле. We see that the devil, both from the first days of his work on the earth. Он хочет разрушить наши семьи. He's now trying to destroy our families. Потому что семья это фундамент человека. Because the family is the foundation of a person. Потому что это фундамент общества. It's a fundament of society. Потому что семья – это церковь. Funda- foundation. Foundation of society. Uh, на прошлой неделе я, мы слышали, как uh, пастор Сэм и Кристин, они last, проповедуют. Last week we heard about Pastor Sam and Kristen. И какая ситуация в Европе. And the situation there in Europe. Да, uh, и я понял, что действительно там дьявол хочет разрушить семьи, и это опасное место. And I understood that if we think Europe looks like a safe place, but really it's very um, di- uh, not safe. Dangerous. Dangerous. Thank you. <laughs> it's very dangerous. And очень благополучной. And Europe, Europe looks like a safe place. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, 
Но по-настоящему, да, дьявол работает во всяком месте. But for real, the devil is working in every place. И <coughs> поэтому должно быть больше миссионеров. That's why we need to больше, have... больше апостольских ви... миссионеров. That we need to have more apostolic missionaries in this earth, in the world. Amen. Amen. Года три назад в Кыргызстане. Well, about three years ago in Kyrgyzstan. Uh, я встретился с одним, так сказать, в кавычках миссионером. Uh, I met one man who, like missionary in quotation marks. И он приехал в Кыргызстан, чтобы научить нас жить с Богом. He said he came to Kyrgyzstan to teach us how to live with with God. Но он рассказал о своей семье. And he talked about his family. У него есть два сына. He has two sons. И старший сын, он еще не женат, но он живет со своей подругой. And he gave the example. He said, well, my one son, he is he's still not married, but he lives together with his girlfriend. А младший сын. His younger son. Он ходит в церковь. He goes to a church. Где ж, э, пастор женщина. Where the pastor is a woman. И она лесбиянка. And she is a lesbian. И когда он сказал им, что это неправильно, right они сказали, это не твое дело. They said it's none of his business. Ты, и они больше не разговаривают. They don't talk with their father. Но Библия говорит о том, But the Bible says, что если кто-то не может управлять своим домом, that if somebody can't control, um, своей семьей, управлять they своей can't семьей, manage their own family, как он может заботиться о церкви? How is he supposed to be a leader in the church? Ной был проповедником правды. He, Noah was, was a preacher of righteousness. It's 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 5. How many people did Noah save with his preaching? Just his family. Eight people, including himself. And right now, in this time, we're like Noah inside the ark. And on, on the, no, the door of the ark, like Noah took a knife and write something on the door of the ark. And there it said, stay at home, stay safe. Stay home, stay safe. Stay home, stay safe. Stay home, stay safe. И <coughs> Бог сказал Аврааму такие слова. God said to Abraham these words. Genesis chapter 18, 18 and 19. Seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of earth shall be blessed in him. For I know him, that he will command his children and his household after him, and they shall keep the way of the Lord, to do justice and judgment, that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he has spoken of him. Amen. Amen. И в Новом Завете the New Testament, ангел сказал сотнику Корнелию, позови Петра, который скажет тебе слова, Peter, words, который спасешься ты и весь дом твой. Павел сказал темничному стражу, jailer, веруй в Господа Иисуса Христа, спасешься ты и весь дом твой. 16, 31, Первые христиане Они собирались как в храме, так и по домам. And in the first Christians, they gathered in the temple and in the houses. И не отчаивайтесь, если у вас что-то не получается. But don't despair if something doesn't work out. Бог видит ваше сердце. God sees your heart. Бог видит ваш труд. He sees your work. Ваше усердие. Your diligence. И вашу верность. Your faithfulness. А в 2012-13 годах. In 2012-2013. Я служил uh, цыганам. I was serving the gypsies in Kyrgyzstan. Да, и цыгане это особенный народ. And the, Kirk, the gypsies are a special kind of people. Похоже, как апостол Павел говорит о кретянах. They're the same like the apostle Paul speaks about the Christians. In Titus chapter 1, 12, one of themselves, even a prophet of their own, said, the Christians are always liars, evil beasts, slow bellies. Но и этих людей Бог хочет спасти. But even God wants to give these people a chance. Он дает им шанс. He gives them chance. В течение года два-три раза в неделю я посещал этих людей. For a whole year, about three to four times a week, I would go and visit them. И они всегда начинали служение поздно вечером, семь-восемь часов. Every Sunday they always start service in the evening at seven or eight o'clock at night. Каждый раз. Every time. Каждый каждый раз это в следующей неделе тоже. Mm. Oh, every time they have service, no matter when it is in the week, it's always that late. И таким образом воскресеньем мне приходилось, но у меня было четыре 
церкви у нас не города. And so every Sunday there was I had four different churches that were in different towns. И последние это были. And the last one was the, the what they call it, Gypsy Church. Yeah. Uh, каждый четверг я ездил для изучения Библии. And every Thursday I would go for Bible studies with them. Еще на евангелизации. And still go for посещения. evangelism, visit them sometime. И много раз мы испытывали действие Духа Святого. And all the time we would always talk about the baptism of Jesus' name. И каждый раз мы испытывали присутствие Духа Святого на каждом. And we would also talk about the Holy Spirit. We would feel the presence of God in our services. И я обучал их о крещении Святым Духом и о крещении во имя Иисуса Христа. I always speak, spoke to them about baptism in Jesus' name and Holy Spirit. Однажды пришла Женщина, которая была очень сильно больна. One time there was a woman who came. She was really sick. У нее был рак. She had cancer. И их лидер. And the leader there of them. Он сказал, ну, Бог может тебя исцелить когда-нибудь. He told her, God can heal you sometime if he wants to. Да, если ты будешь молиться. If you would pray sometime, he would heal you. Давайте будем сейчас молиться. And I said, well, let's pray now. Бог хочет исцелить. Каждого грешника God wants, в этот момент. God wants to heal every sinner at this moment. И перед тем, как молиться, я сказал ей, что она должна покаяться. And before we prayed, I told her she needed to repent. И она действительно искренне покаялась. And she sincerely, very sincerely repented. Ну, человек, когда он находится перед порогом смерти, он действительно может делать это искренне. Whenever somebody is very close to the verge of death, they will make anything very sincerely. И когда мы стали молиться, мы положили руки на нее. And we will put our hands on her and start to pray for her. Она вся покрылась потом. And she was full of sweat. Там на лице у нее было много. She, had, she was so wet. Her body was very wet when we prayed for her. И действительно в тот момент что-то вышло из нее. And at that moment you could see it, something had left her. А uh, и после этого я ей стал проповедовать, говорить о крещении во имя Иисуса. And after that I started to preach to her about the baptism in Jesus name and И крещение духа Святого. Да, и она сказала, что она хочет She said she wanted to be baptized. На следующий день. On the next day. Она была крещена во имя Иисуса Христа. She was baptized in Jesus' name. И она выглядела совсем здоровой. And she was very healthy. Выглядела. Выглядела. Ну как посмотри. Ну хорошо. И но вы знаете, это был только один человек из всех. But out of all those gypsies, there was only one person who was baptized in Jesus' name. Остальные никак не хотели принимать. Nobody else wanted to. Они не хотели повиноваться истине. They didn't want to hear about truth. Особенно их лидер. Especially their leader. Однажды я взял своего друга, пастора Алмаза, с собой, чтобы он тоже туда поведал о крещении во имя Иисуса. One time I took my, my friend, Pastor Almaz from Kyrgyzstan, I took him with me, so he would speak to them about, about baptism in Jesus' name, oneness of God, once again. Когда он закончил проповедовать, when he finished speaking, он спросил их, he asked them, вы поняли, что что Отец, Сын и Святой Дух – это не имя. Do you understand that это не имена. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, it's not names. И что надо крестить, креститься во имя Иисуса Христа. That you need to be baptized in Jesus' name. И тогда их лидер сказал, да, мы все поняли. And the leader told us, yes, we understood everything. И мы тогда спросили, что ты понял? And so we asked the leader, we said, well, what did you understand? И он сказал, я said, понял, I understand что у Иисуса That Jesus three has three names. Отец, Сын и Святой Дух. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Поэтому, и поэтому надо крестить во имя Отца, Сына и Святого Духа. And that's why we have to baptize in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. И когда мы ехали назад, when we were driving home, мы просто молчали. We were just quiet. И мы просто устали. We're just so tired. И мы понимали, что все, что мы делали, это зря. And we feel like everything we did was just in vain. И была тишина. And everything was quiet. И вдруг я услышал голос. And I heard some voice say. И он сказал. Даже я понял. Even I understand. И это был мой сын Тимофей. It, это был мой сын. It was Тимофей, my son Timothy. Который сидел на заднем сиденье. Who sat in the back seat of the car. И тогда ему еще не было даже восьми лет. He was only seven years old still at the time. И я повернулся. And I then turned around. И спросил, что ты понял? And I asked him, what did you understand? И он сказал. And he said. Даже я понял, что надо креститься во имя Иисуса Христа. Even I understand you have to get baptized in Jesus' name. Аллилуйя. Аллилуйя. Uh, <coughs> в Псалме. 
Psalms 150, verse 6. Написано, все it says, let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. И сейчас я еще больше понимаю. And now I more understand смысл этих слов. The, the meaning of these words. Все, что имеет дыхание жизни. Everything that has breath. Has все, все это должно славить Бога. Should praise. Восхвалять. Should благодарить. Worship. Should praise, thank God. Четверг был день благодарения. And Thursday was the Thanksgiving day. И это был особенный день, когда мы действительно благодарили. Не как раньше до этого. It was a very special day of Thanksgiving for me. I was thanking God even more than before. Я сделал ничего, чтобы иметь эту жизнь. And I haven't done anything that I deserve this life. Но Бог дал мне but God gave me the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Меня. He revived me. Искупил, redeemed me. Дал мне вечную жизнь. He gave me eternal life. Господи, я могу дышать. Lord, I can breathe. Я славлю тебя. I praise я благодарю you. тебя. I thank you. Благословляю тебя. I bless you. Я никогда так не благодарил Бога, как сейчас, когда я могу дышать. I never thank, thank God as much as right now that Ты I can breathe. Ты меня дыхание that жизни. That you gave me the breath of life. Воздадил меня. That you Дал мне бесценный me. подарок Святого Духа. That you gave me this invaluable gift. Ты есть воздух, которым я дышу. You are this breath that я нуждаюсь в тебе каждую секунду, каждый момент моей жизни. The, you every second, every Потому что ты и жизнь, я люблю тебя. I love you because you are я light. славлю тебя и благодарю I тебя. And thank you. Аллилуйя, слава Hallelujah. Богу. Аллилуйя. Аминь. 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 I, I pray we all uh, really took these lessons in today. Um, thank you, Brother Vladimir, Sister Rebecca, uh, for today, the ministry. Um, thank you, Sister Colleen. And um, we're, we are blessed. We, we should thank God. We were all dead in trespasses and sins but God had mercy on us and gave us new life. Uh, it, is, uh, it is amazing that he chose you and that he chose me. It's amazing that we have new life. Um, I don't know, Brother Orson, do we need to do announcements here? No? Uh, you can unmute and greet everyone. Uh, God bless you. Thank you. Uh, Maybe we should give altar call members.